So I'm gonna try and get a little bit of A7 running down the nose as well. So I think what will also help to better see if the light and shade is working to get a little bit more of the surrounding areas worked take the focus off this one spot and start to get in some more of the light and shade like for example the top of the leg here is a very dramatically lit area So any one also a good colour to go back through some of the dark brown areas and warm those up. And once I come back in then with a bit of pure white again, um, some of these highlights on the face should start to jump out a bit more.
so I can really lean heavily in some places where I want a lot of pigment and I'm trying to brighten the brightest highlights with pure white here and just to take away a little bit of the individual marks that the pencils make they're great for getting the detail but the overall texture of the fur looks a little bit spiky in some places so I feel like that's helped a lot and I've managed to bring out some of those brightest highlights mostly by darkening the darker areas and then at the end coming back in with the highlight colours so if your highlights aren't standing out you need to go and darken the other areas that are surrounding it mostly So the fur was looking very spiky, a bit jagged and what I've done is just build up a few more layers of the soft pastel to the point where it starts to look a bit more like paint, it starts to gel together a bit more. So I'll probably do a little bit more work at the nose when I've got all of the surrounding area done. What I want to do now just to help myself with the light and shade a bit is get in another area that's very dramatically lit and I'm just going to add in a little bit of colour over the top of this leg. to create the really glowing edge that's in the shadows here. I'm going to use some RE9. I really need to work what's behind this leg so I'm just getting a little bit of it in to give me some idea of my values on the face. Texture down the leg. 
something I can apply the lighter colors onto. You want to avoid putting your top layer on fresh, unpasteled paper. It's really not easy. So the last layers have been a big boost to the overall warmth of the piece and it's starting to come around. <laughs> So I'm coming in here with A27 before the white in certain areas at least because it's really very warm here and from what's just happened on the face it's very easy to make this look quite cold and this A27 might work well underneath the white just to keep it a bit warmer. in the sunlit areas at least. But the divide between light and shade on this side really is as stark as bright white right next to the grey eight. So, so far anyway, I would say that this paper is quite tricky for fur. It's similar in some ways to the pastel mat, but 
I find that you can blend a little bit more on pastel matte before everything just mixes and turns into a muddy mess. This is proving just a little bit difficult to control. I just picked up A19 there. And I will definitely make use of some pastel pencil just to finish off the edges of this.
So at this point, what I think I'll do is get this whole area blocked in. There's a really large section of dark shadow here and that's going to start to help balance the light and shade a bit more because this is probably the darkest area of shadow. So I'll work on that and it'll also help me finish off the leg and move more across the picture in this direction. So it's really quite dark in certain places over here so I'm picking up the black again. Now this little paw in here is tucked in but we can see a little bit of it. So I've got my black new parcel here. Making it nice and dark. Now to me the hardest work is done on this piece. And not just because most of the face is finished, but the sunlit area is often the harder area to work on because quite often you can see a lot more detail in the sunlit parts. And then I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do this part on the neck reasonably quickly because we're in the shadows, you can't quite see the same level of detail in here. I can be a bit looser. So I'm really letting the black come in over the edges of where the teal will be. And then we've got this really dark shadow out the front, but I'm only really interested in this part of the neck and on down to the body and this little paw in the shadows. So far the paper has not been hurting my fingertips because when I'm doing this I'm barely touching the paper. I'm certainly not rubbing as hard as I normally would on a pastel mat or velour for example. I'm going really easy on my fingertips. But it seems to be working. It's not painful at all. So I'll start to bring in some more colour on the rest of the body, starting with BE6. You can see I've already got some of this on the neck in certain places. But I can afford to block in a little bit more. And now there are some more ruffled areas up here on the neck. It's not quite as complicated as this area here. Because I would say that the thing that has taken me the longest in this entire portrait is this area on the top of the head and this whole ear. All of those little layers of hair are so tricky. It really took me a long time. So this is very much a fur tutorial because that is what most of this portrait is about. And it is not the easiest type of fur with all of the, the depth showing through from these little creases. And again, just letting that lower layer smudge and cover more of the paper.
So just looking for the darkest creases first. Even coming in with a little bit of black. Now when I'm working on the shadow areas in a picture like this, because on my screen at the moment I have Photoshop open with my photo reference. And I've actually lightened the photo reference a little bit. I've lightened the shadows just so that I can see better what's going on in there because in the photo reference it's really quite dark over here and you you can just go as dark as that and not put any detail in this area but I like to lighten the photo reference and see can I squeeze a bit more detail out of there so I'm also going to come in with some of this um, BE23 like I did up here in this area of shadow So this is really just the base layer and I need to be mindful to not go too, too bright over here. It's got to remain a pretty dark colour all over. And you can probably guess that I'm going to bring in some cool colours as well because we're in the shadows. But I'm getting all these warm undertones down first. Because I've seen how easy it is to let the fur get really cold looking. And that's not what this animal is. It's got such a warm glow to his fur. So I think if I come in with more of the warmth in the first layers. That might help. So this is A27, just working on what is still really the side of the face here, just behind this little area. There's a very definite change between sunlight on the face and this little area just behind. So I hadn't really worked this little edge on the face too much until I get some colour in behind.
So of course we're in the shadows and I'm picking up grey at 8. If you have the animal set from Unison, this colour is in it. I'd love to hear from you. Do you find this colour as useful as I do? It's one of my favourites. So it is similar to the rest of the body where I'm, I'm having to layer up the colours a little bit to try and get the effect that I want. So far that seems to be working. In fact I really haven't used much of the animal set in this piece. It's quite a limited number of the colours. Perhaps about half of the set is in use. So I really hope that from this tutorial you see how much you can do, even if you don't have a huge collection of pastels, don't let that put you off. Just work with a more limited palette, work on your mixing skills. It's going to help force you to layer your pastel. And that's a great way to learn. So. We all start off with a small number of pastels. Well, I know I certainly did. Drooling over the, the drawers of pastels, especially the unison ones in my local art shop. And then over the years, I've collected more and more and it's great to have more colors. And I try to make use of many, many colors in my work and choose different palettes for different paintings. But I also love coming back to this palette, this animal set. And it's fun to work with a predetermined set of colours that you don't go beyond. It's a fun exercise. So again with the photo lightened I can actually see some of the shapes on the on the paw here. 
I'm happy to go with the lighting as it is in the photo reference, but I often do like to lighten the shadows just a little bit so we can see some more color and detail in there because I'm not the best photographer in the world so quite often if I'm photographing in direct sunlight or high contrast lighting like this quite often my shadows will look quite dark in the photo and then I know that if it's as a photo reference for a painting that that's okay because I can fix that in the painting stages And of course, you are invited to work along with me for free here on YouTube. But if you want extra guidance, consider joining me on Patreon. You'll get access to this photo reference and lots of other photo references royalty free of the Fennec Fox. And as I said, I'm not the best photographer in the world, but I have a decent camera and I go to a lot of effort to get myself in front of the sorts of animals that I want to paint. And I'm happy to share a lot of those photo references with my patrons because I will never ever paint them all. I'm just trying to shape the foot a little bit more using the black because it's really quite dark right behind the foot. And in fact, if you're working from the photo reference at the moment and you haven't lightened the shadows, you could even be struggling to make out much of the foot because it does look quite dark in the photo. So a big tip is to have your photo reference open on a computer screen nearby. Even if you like to work from printouts, you could print out two versions of the photo. One with the regular contrast and one where the shadows are really lightened. Give yourself a bit of extra information to work with. I'm very lightly trying to um, blend that in a bit because it's much darker in here. The color that I'm putting on is probably a little bit too light for this, but I can work it into the paper. I can soften it and mix it in a bit, either using the pencils or the bigger sticks.
So the pencil, as always, very useful for shaping things a little better. I like going back through and darkening down areas again and it also gives me a chance to just run the pencil through there and shape the lines a little bit better. So I'm starting to pick out the general shape of the paw in there, but it's still much too bright. I mean, the colors in there are much more muted than this, so I think I need to sort of soften everything into the paper. So I'm completely losing the definition what I've just worked on there. And that's totally fine because I can come back in with the darks again, strengthen things. So I'll work on around this area um, and see how this foot starts to look in there. It's still very loose, but I'm trying to figure out just how much detail I actually want to add. So I'm going to come in with some RE9 to add a bit more warmth and glow to this side. I can see some of this lovely warm color glowing. And again, it's going to look a bit bright, but I'm Hoping that once it mixes into the colours underneath, it calms down a little bit. This colour is really the colour that I'm using for the glow. Um, I've used it around the edges of the ears a little bit, under the chin, through the shadow areas a lot, but also on the little glowing edges between the light and shade. Such a thick coat they must have for it to sit in so many different layers, little ruffles.
but when I photographed them I was actually on the other side of a, a wire fence. So in actual fact the shadows that you see in the photo reference are a lot to do with the fence that I was photographing through. And I've done that before actually where I'm, I'm photographing an animal through wire and I'll sometimes not include the shadows that it creates. So my marks look pretty broad and not necessarily that neat but all of this is going to get quite well rubbed into the paper anyway. So I'm just doing a little bit of work with the pastel pencils, mostly switching between the dark brown and the black. So when you do get some pigment on the paper on the Fisher 400 it's a good idea to be pretty light with your blending. Things start to get a bit slippy, the pigment starts to slide around a little bit which is good but you still want to be able to control it a lot. So I'm starting to see these colours mix together a little bit more, which is what I want.
So I'm starting to get a feel for all the individual little clumps of hair. How the little ridges come around the side of the fox. So when I get to this stage, I can start to think a bit more about the the curve of the marks. A lot of what's underneath, you won't really see that much, but now on my upper layers, these are the marks that are more visible. And then of course it's really really dark right in here where we can't see.
So I'm going to try this peach or flesh colored pencil just to tweak the edges and some of this. I'm not leaning very heavily because actually the pencil is a little bit too light in color than what I want. It's reasonably similar to my, if you can see the color of it, it's so dirty, to my RE9. Quite similar. So I can use this just to tweak the edges a little bit. And because this is quite like sandpaper, I barely have to lean for the pencil to make a mark. And then it is actually a little bit lighter just over here. We get some brighter hairs as we get close to the face. I'm use my light grey. So I don't want to get lost in too much detail over here because I think what I've got in already works. I don't think I need a lot more detail over here. I'm gonna try and leave it as loose as possible. Still need to do a little bit more to this paw, 
but I would like to work on a little bit and then I can come back and make some minor adjustments to this area. So I can get this other paw blocked in now. So we've got this tail actually that comes, um, cuts across around here. And comes right up and around here. And down again. And then the rest of this obviously, oops, is the body. So we are on the home stretch. But still a lot of work to do. So as you can see, all my fingers are incredibly dirty and I'm about to work on a white area. In fact, I have it everywhere, both hands, it's on my legs, it's everywhere at the minute. It's what happens when I'm working in the shadow areas. If it gets too annoying, I will stop and go wash my hands. So I already started to work on the shadow down this section and I can also use this peach coloured pencil just to help neaten up the edge of the leg. It was RE9 that I used down this edge. So 
So I've got BE21. Just going to add a bit of texture on down the front of the paw where the white is going to go. I'm not sure if you can pick it out on the audio, but there's a little bit of tippy tapping in my studio. I've got someone here doing roly polies against my studio light. And this piece actually reminds me of her because many of you have painted along with my sleeping dog on YouTube. And that is my little dachshund, Brocky, who is just wandering around. So it's quite similar to that piece, The Sleeping Dog. And I also limited myself in that one to just the unison animal set. The main difference with that one and this one, I would say, is the complexity of the fur. That paint along here on YouTube of The Sleeping Dog is great if you're just starting out. It's a really good beginner tutorial. The fur is reasonably simple in comparison to this. And I've seen many, many absolute beginners do a great job of that sleeping dog. But that is my little sleepy dog. And she's letting me know that she needs some attention or a treat or usually needs something to eat. So this is A31 again. Just being careful with how much white I use down this as we come towards the bottom of the paw here.
So we've got a huge amount of darkness over here on the tail. That's what I might do next because then I've just got this small section of body to work. Um, so I might just get some of the tail blocked in and get a little bit of it started over at this side at least. So even with my photo reference lightened on screen, there are areas over here that are just pitch, pitch black. And part of this piece is the contrast and the light and the shade. So I'm gonna try and make it as dark over here as it is in photo reference. And that's hopefully going to make all of my lovely bright highlights stand out. So this BE6 is actually a pretty good base coat for a lot of what's going on on the tail. So any one, there's a lot of rich warm colour on the tail. 
but carrying that any one color throughout the whole fox is a good idea. So this is BE9. So I'm just experimenting here, really seeing if I want to try and create these smaller hairs with the bigger sticks or if I want to do this section with the pencils. I think the very tip of the tail I'm going to bring in some more pencil because it's helping me get those little fine ends to the hairs. As I get further up the tail into the bushier section, maybe I'll be able to use a bit more soft pastel. So I'm just judging as I go whether it's the soft sticks that I need to pick up or a bit of pastel pencil. Just depends on what I'm trying to do and if I can manage to do it at all.
So to speed up the process on the tail, I'm going to get a bit more of it blocked in using the bigger sticks. I think it's too soon to come in with the pencils. I'm going to be here all day otherwise. But I can get the majority of it blocked in and then use the pencils at the end to get a bit more definition. I definitely need the pencils to get the little fine ends um, that are coming out over the leg. But I also want some of these broader marks involved. So this is BE9. And I really don't mind if my marks are a bit rough. I'm deliberately trying to make them a little bit shaky here because the hairs on the tail have that little bit of frizz to them. And now the same deal on the tail actually. We've got sunlight on this part and then we're into the very darkest of shadow over here. But the shadow does come in around the top of the tail here where it uh, overlaps the rest of the body. So I do need to bear in mind that I need to switch to more of my shadow tones. As we come around this corner. even some A27.
we're bringing in just a little bit of extra warmth from RE9. And then I think I can possibly use the similar color to bring some of these hairs up and over this part of the paw. Just before I do that, it's not quite so dark on this part of the paw, so I'll add in another little bit of A31. So you can't really see where the the tail ends and the ground underneath it begins. It's so dark in here. But of course, the black on the tail doesn't just end abruptly in a straight line. So I'm trying to bring the black in gradually.
You can also bring in a little bit of gray eight on the shadow part of the teal. You start to see a pattern forming with the color choices and all of the different areas and how the light is behaving there. I'm trying to be really light when I blend like this. I just want to soften the marks. But it's hard to in this paper without just completely losing all the definition. But I would still rather soften the marks and come back in and add more definition again than leave it the way it is. feel like the teal needs another color, um, something that's got more warmth, more orange tone to it. Um, so I may pick up another color and I can add more of this in throughout the piece to tie it in a little bit better, but I'm picking up BE11 to see if this extra bit of warmth around certain parts of the teal here will help. And then there are some other places where I can add a little bit of it in as well. So if I pick up a colour pretty late on in a painting, I will try to add some little pieces of it elsewhere in the painting. Sometimes it's not possible, like one good example would be you're doing a dog portrait and it has a bright pink colour. Um, there may not be any other bright pink on the dog, of course. But even then, sometimes there might be some pink reflected off the collar onto the dog somewhere. So I'm always looking at ways to um, make sure that I'm not using any colour in just one place, that it doesn't look too isolated, unless that is the intention with that colour. So now that I have enough layers of pastel on the teal, it starts to behave a little bit nicer. I can start to work on all the little layers. And 
I don't think I have to go into too much detail on the tail or on the rest of the body. I think I want most of the focus and the detail to be on the face. And of course the ear. So yeah, this additional 27 seems to be a good colour for this little section here where we're just coming into the darker shadows. And then just where we come out of the shadows and bringing in some BE14. And this will probably be the brightest highlight on the tail. So I'm making extra effort with these marks. I'm okay with them being a bit broader as when I soften them in they'll look really nice and soft and fur like. It's difficult, this is quite a chunky piece of pastel but I'm hoping I can still help these edges a little bit more. And just using a little piece of A19 right at the tip of the tail. But I'm trying hard not to mess it up at this stage with the chunky sticks. But like I said, the hairs are um, quite wavy so your marks don't have to be perfect. And I still feel like the tail is missing uh, a warm glow and I know that I've got two colours in the set that would do this so I'm going to pick up another colour I think I'm going to go for RE18 I didn't feel like BE11 was quite warm enough it's really so warm down next to the dark shadow here
and perhaps I can bring a little bit of this in in a couple of other places too. It doesn't take very much just to unify a colour or to make it not seem out of place. Okay, so I'll probably move on now and get the rest of the body blocked in at least. We're definitely on the home stretch. So, again, the first thing I'm looking for is the darks. 
we've got just a few ridges in the fur left to tackle. I'm going to make it as simple as possible and not put as much detail in over here. Now another opportunity to bring in a little bit of BE-11. This is BE-36. And then as we come over into closer to the sunlight here, I'm picking up A27. What I'm looking for here, just like before, is the texture of the fur and not the overall colour of the fur, but the colours that I can see in between the fur. So that dark tone that the lighter colour of the fur is going to stand out against. And that brings us back round to this white section that we've already started.
So it's pretty tricky to blend light edges like this into dark edges without just making a mess. But I really want to soften all of that. So I'm really blending here as light as I possibly can. It's tricky. I think that's starting to look okay. And just for some sections in here, instead of pure white, I might pick up some A7 very light yellow tint and it's also going to dip down into additional 31 in this area So we are just working now to close in all the gaps. I'm using this BE14 to add a bit of warmth in to these areas.
so a little bit of grey eight. and back in with a 31 
So a seven knight. I'm just gradually working my way up to this highlighted section in the middle. And then I'll probably use some pencil to tweak what I've already done. And then we are almost on to that little slither of ground in the foreground. And we're almost finished. I've really enjoyed this piece, it's been a real challenge and it's been a good opportunity to just focus on fur, which is what I wanted from this piece. No eyes to worry about and lots of different directions of fur, colours of fur. It really has been a fur overload, so I hope that you've enjoyed it for that reason. Definitely not one of the easier types of fur to paint. You've seen me make many, well, not so much mistakes, but go in the wrong direction several times in this piece. And I hope that perhaps that has been interesting to see how I've brought it out of that stage and got it closer in most cases to how I want it to be. So I can use some pastel pencil now just to help refine this a bit further.
going to also use the darker brine over on these darker ridges. So I can come in with a little bit of pure white here in the center.
So this area is starting to get there. It's one of those things that you could spend forever on. I feel like you could spend forever on Fisher 400 just trying to get it to look really soft and convincing. So you might find if you're working on another paper I'm not convinced that Fisher 400 would be something I'd choose again for fur because it really was quite difficult to control the pigment and if you're trying to create detail you definitely need some kind of control. I like the finished effect though. I like how the fur has come out. It looks a bit different actually to the other papers. But I've definitely felt like I was battling with it a little bit just to get it to look as soft as I wanted. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the rest of that. I definitely could work a bit more at these areas even bringing in a little bit more contrast in these dark creases. I think that's really what it needs. But in a little minute I'm going to move on to the foreground.
So just before I change the camera angle, I'm going to add in the little whiskers on the face and then I can move on to the foreground. Now a lot of this, when I clean my hands at the end, I may come back in and just lightly tap a lot of it and just to soften the marks further. So I'm doing a little bit of this area just before I add the whiskers because I don't want to touch those once they're done. So even just by pressing the paper rather than rubbing then you don't lose too much definition. So they, I'm kind of plotting them now in my head where they need to go. They really come straight back out. So I'm putting them, marking the point where I wanted to start and then just a very fluid motion. And at the very ends of some of them, they're just glowing a little bit in the light. If I can perhaps finish it off with a light grey. Sometimes it's too tricky. Sometimes you need a much sharper point on your pencil. The white might be the job. And then there are a few kind of sticking out from the forehead, but they're not even as dark as black. So I've picked up a quite a mid-tone grey pencil. And I think that's really enough. There aren't too many whiskers on display, so I'll change the camera view and quickly block in the foreground. So this little slither of foreground, there is so much going on with the textures on the rest of the fox that I don't really feel that bothered about doing anything too detailed down here. So what I will do is try to create a little kind of a glow to the edge of the shadow line. And it's quite a, a sharp shadow line, so you can really see the line between light and shade. So I've picked up BE23. And I can block a little bit of that in. I especially want it on that top edge though. What I really mainly want to do here is make sure that I use colours from within the fox so that this part ties in with the rest of the piece. There's not that much background involved here so it's not difficult to make sure that it complements the piece.
hand at this stage you might even need to darken your shadow again. So this is another colour that I tried to bring in pretty late on, just to bring in some colour around the tail, R E 18. And I'm also using it just to add a, a little bit of a glowing edge to that area where light meets shade. I think the main undertone that I'll use for this is BE21. So I'm really using the breadth of the end of the pastel here to make big sweeping marks. And then I also want to bring in some of the orange tone from the fox on this. I'm really just mixing together some colours here.
so yeah I think that's me about done I could definitely do a little bit more work in the foreground here although it's such a small part of the painting it's not that important um, and there are other areas I could definitely go and tweak a little bit more on the body on the tail but I think for the purposes of the demo I've given you a lot of techniques in this piece it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination definitely a tricky little animal to paint but I hope that you've enjoyed working along with this so yeah I think I can call it just about done You've made it to the end. Did you watch along or did you paint along? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see some more real-time demos like this one, I have lots more here on my YouTube channel. I also have loads more demos like this on my Patreon, so do check me out over there. But I'll try to release another one here on YouTube really soon. Thanks very much to all the people who have subscribed to me here already, if you haven't then please do hit the subscribe button. And I'll add links below to my Patreon channel. I have a full library on my website, which you can browse if you'd like to see what tutorials I have available. But thanks very much for watching here, and until next time, happy passling.